What's up? What's up? What's up, Agents for Life? Welcome to Podcast 209. Super glad you're here. I'm going to take a break from the normal of my podcast. I hope you don't mind. We're going to set aside training, objections, phone scripts, in-home appointments, yada, yada, yada. Maybe just do something a little more inspirational this week. So let's see how I do. Um, first, though, a quick announcement. Um, if you're new, you need to be on the call Monday. This coming call, there's a huge announcement from Barry Clarkson, All Points Bulletin. I'm going to put a link in the notes. Please, please, please come join. Um, and then the team call. It's right after the team calls. So we got the team call and then right after the Equus call. Okay, so just put that on your calendar. Don't want to miss it. Okay, so let's break this down. So uh, I was inspired this week by a story. Um, here's a guy by the name of Jim Dreyer. Okay, he's a swimmer. On uh, honestly, a funny name, a funny last name for a swimmer, Jim Dreyer. Now you'll probably never forget it. But uh, Jim actually started out not being a swimmer. In fact, he was 32 years old when he took his very first swim lesson. Okay, all his life he had a near death experience, drowning, almost drowning. And that just scared him off from, from uh, swimming his whole life until 32, takes his first lesson. Guess what? Two years later, two years later after his first lesson as a 32-year-old, um, he is swimming 65 miles across Lake Michigan in a fundraiser event for Big Brothers and Big Sisters. This was back in 1998. This was his big first I guess, exposure to long distance swimming. I'm sure he did a lot of practice up until that point. This guy today, they've estimated that he has swam over 25,000 miles, which is in fact a trip around the globe. So that's what we're working with. But he started when he was 32. Okay. Think about that. It, it, it uh, kind of controlled him. Fear held him back. He got tired of it. He faced his fear. He said, I'm done with this. And he started swimming. Now listen to what he's done since. So there's that first back, first big event, 1998. 1999, he swam the distance of Lake Huron. Okay, he was up in the Great Lakes area. And that's 52 miles. He In, in 2000, he solo triathlon world distance, uh, 200 and let's see, uh, 55.9 miles after running and biking. So he was a triathlete. So at the end, you know, it's usually what a, I don't know if it's a mile swim at the end of a triathlon, right? 26, 52, and then a mile or whatever it is. Um, yeah, no, no, that wasn't good enough for him. It was a 26 mile run in the sand, by the way, 130 mi mile bike ride and a 55 mile swim. Okay. August of 2002, Lake Superior goes 48 miles, breaks another record. Um, in August of 2004, he does this solo aquathon record again, 35 miles. Um, here's a cool one. In August of 2005, he breaks a record for a self-sufficient swim. So apparently he's dragging his own goods. He doesn't have a team. He's doing it completely on his own. He's got two rafts or a raft is 325 pounds hauling all of his gear, his food, everything. And he goes 60 miles across one of the Great Lakes. I think it's, uh, what was it? I don't remember which one. But anyways, Lake Superior. Hauling, so he's tied to this cord and he's swimming, hauling a raft that weighs over 300 pounds. He does that through 60 miles. Stormy seas, I don't know if you've been out of the Great Lakes, but I've heard they're kind of like the ocean. Big waves, um, 37 degree temperatures in the water. Got just a little bit above freezing, so very, very cold. And, you know, in the dark, he, he talked about being lost. And one of his, his equipment broke down. All he had was just this little compass. Like, you look around, there's it's just ocean every direction. You have no idea where you're going. He was by himself. So, <laughs> incredible stuff. And then August of 2006, a self-sufficient double crossing of the Straits of Mackinac. I don't know if I'm saying that name right. If I'm not please correct me. Mechanic, Mackinac, Mackinac. 2007, first to swim triple crossings of the Straits of Mackinac. So three times out and back. 
Um, August of 2013, this one's cool. He did a little fundraiser because there was a town in Michigan that wasn't doing so well. They were trying to rebuild and they started this campaign um, to try and rebuild uh, that town. And so he takes 2,000 pounds of bricks, that's symbolic for the rebuilding thing, puts them in two rafts, ties himself to them, and he starts swimming across the channel. Um, 51 hours, 22 miles. Okay, he's hauling two thousand pounds that he's that he's strapped to. Well, about halfway through, I guess one of the rafts overturned, and he ended up only hauling, only completing half of that, so a half a ton. But still, have you ever tried to pull a half a ton and swim? <laughs> Hard enough to pull myself, let alone anything else. But this wasn't good enough for Jim. He started getting into strength swimming, which I guess is a category. And he towed a 27 ton ferry for 300 yards. Wow. 27 tons. So one ton, half ton wasn't enough. He had to up the ante and go all the way to 27 tons that he hauled 300 yards in 54 minutes. He towed a barge carrying weighing 19 tons, a crew, a um, bunch of people. And he hauled it for four miles. Uh, no, no. He hauled it a lot longer than that. He was four miles off the trip, 9.3 miles. So he hauled a 19-ton barge in 10 hours for 9.3 miles. I mean, wh where does this guy stop? So why am I telling you all this? Oh, before I do, let me tell you my favorite story. This is my favorite one. Um, he put all of, his, all of his gear in a kayak, averaging about 100 pounds, and self-sufficient, okay, he swam uh, 422 miles in 29 days, eight hours and three minutes. <laughs> like, wow. So you start to wonder, where are the limitations in this guy's brain? Are there any? I don't know. He just woke up one day and said, you know what? Let's do something different. Let's break some records. Let's change the world. He's a human just like you and I. Before he started swimming, he was scared of the water. He didn't even dare get in. He, he wasn't a swimmer. He wasn't born with special fins or enlarged lungs or, you know, webbed feet. Like we th sometimes think these special people are. They, they just have special uh, desires inside. It's not about their special gifts or talents they're born with. They just have this insane desire to go out and do something great. And I don't know about you, but that inspires me because here I am in my little corner of the world, some crazy life insurance agent trying to grow a business, trying to build a team, trying to sell some life insurance to people, trying to help them understand the benefits, right? Trying to make my little impact in the world. Okay. But why can't I break down some of my limitations? Why can't I redefine the industry? Why can't I make a bigger mark in our industry? Why can't you? I am inspired and I am grateful and thankful for all of the people, all the gym dryers out there that are fighting the good fight and breaking their own limitations. And maybe your limitations aren't 466 miles across a, <laughs> the, one of the biggest ocean lakes in the world right? Maybe your limitations were, you know, just much, much smaller, but you're still breaking them. Well, I'm inspired by that too. And I want to just encourage you. This, this is the thankful season. It's uh, Thanksgiving. We've got family time. We've got downtime. Maybe you're taking some time off of work. If not, I encourage it. Um, just look around the world that you're in and notice the miracles that are everywhere in the right people. Now, there's a lot of people that are just the opposite. You think they're a bunch of dingbats, right? But there are people every day breaking limitations and inspiring the rest of us to go out and do the same. And I am thankful for those people. I'm thankful for you. And I want to encourage you to sit down and just spend some time. Maybe instead of just watching another version of The Grinch this season, maybe we'll get into a documentary or a biography or a book that inspires you and maybe share some of those stories or encourage your kids or ask them about their dreams, what they're going to do with their lives, or maybe sit down with your spouse and talk about your own, maybe be vulnerable just a little bit. And if you want to take this life insurance gig up to the, up to the max and change your 
financial situation and your children and your children's children. And maybe you have big, big dreams like that. Maybe you want to get out of your job like I did. Maybe compared to Jim Dreyer, those are just small dreams. But to you, they're big. To you, they're important. Maybe start talking about those more. Maybe sit down and just exercise a little bit of gratitude for people like Jim that teach us anything is possible. Anything is possible. Who would have thought a person, one human could do all those things? But he went and did it, starting at age 32. Maybe you're getting a, le a late start on life. You know what? Who cares? Throw your excuses out. Throw your limitations out. Be grateful for every single day God has given you. And just go out there and inspire others by doing amazing things no one thought you could. And look to the side because I'll probably be right there next to you, encouraging you the whole way. You're awesome. Thank you for listening. Have an awesome Thanksgiving, and I'll talk to you next week.